episode 105 of Burrows and Burbs, season three. I can't believe we're 105 episodes before we've gotten to the best, the best of Boston. Is not in Boston. It's the suburbs of Boston. And I've got three experts. I've got Joni Shore, the legendary Joni Shore. I've got John Shore, who put this in my head on our London trip. I had to go to London to hear about the best of Boston. Right. And then Craig said, wait a minute. It's not just Weston and Wellesley. Let's talk a little bit about the Cape. Let's talk about Needham. You know, let's talk about some of those other suburbs besides Weston and Wellesley. And so here we are. But before we begin, I have to, I have, I have to uh, share the love. I have three things I want to mention. One, designforfreedom.org. I want everybody to check out Design for Freedom. It's about ethical sourcing of building materials in the building trades. That is sponsored by gracefarms.org, and it's near and dear to our heart. The second thing I wanted to mention is Lobster Fest is coming up. You think our lobsters come from here? No, they come from Massachusetts and uh, Maine, and we ship them down. But the Rotary Club is doing Lobster Fest on the 29th. Get your tickets now. And then the other plug I wanted to make was robertocabrera.com. Definitely the best market report. I read it every week, every month, and you should too. So go to robertocabrera.com. If you New want, one comes out tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, if you want a really great insight into what's going on in the New York market. And so at some point in the conversation, I'm going to ask you, where do I go for a really great market report on the Boston and suburban market? Boston market. But before we begin, let me just introduce my guest. So Joni, why don't you tell us um, who you are and what market you serve? Oh, I said, well, it, I'm Joni Shore. I've been doing this. I, I, it like shows my age. But anyway, I've been working for 37 years and uh, since the kids were little and I do all over. We're from Western you know, I brought the children up in Weston. They went to Weston schools. Uh, John didn't go to Weston High School. He did go to Trinity Pauling boarding school. And I and then I've lived in Wellesley. I'm from Brookline, Massachusetts. I shop in Newton. So I know the whole area around here and I sell in Needham. I, I sell all of it. Wherever I have to go, I go. That's it. So and I, I put just, up a map. And just to uh, kind of locate everybody, there's a little red line around Weston. And I see Wellesley is immediately to the south and Needham Correct. is a little bit to the east. And mm -hmm. so I'm beginning to see that it's all kind of lined up against I-95 on the west side. And Newton, you're, you're missing Newton. Okay. Yeah, Newton. And Newton is east, is right here, east of Weston. A so little bit and, closer. And then Brookline goes a little bit closer into Boston okay. right there. Yeah. And then we also do Dover because we had a subdivision there. So Which is south, directly south of Needham and Wellesley, if you go back. Right. Um, okay. Down there. Just, yeah. just go all the way up and down Route 9 and one. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit to the left. Yeah. Okay. There oh, there there's the and is it easy to get around from one to the other of all those little places? Not really. Oh, yeah. It's easy. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. Not really. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends the on the time and, of day. The traffic. Horrendous. But I, I, I do, I do. I get around, I go, I know I have roots. I know where to go and you know how to how to lay out. And we're listing a place in Lexington this next weekend. So I ran we ran to Lexington. So I was in Newton and then I went to Wellesley and then I went to Lexington today. So we're all over the place. You know, I found that if you really want to make a you know a nice living and you have to do all the you have to know everything you have to know all the towns and i know them really well because i was brought up here and i have friends in every town so um and you have to know what's going on if i have a listing in uh um in, in like wellesley i have to know what's going on other places so i can compare and say this is better than the listing in, in Newton that has no land, no this, no that. So I can compare from each one town to the other if it's my client or if it's my listing. So I could sort of push it a little. So um, that's- that's Because buyers look in various towns. They look, in, they look all over. They, they look, look Newton, West, Wellesley, Weston. Yeah, that's uh, what they do. Lexington, Concord. Um, you know, people and, compare. And some of them want condos. And Newton has the towers of Chestnut Hill uh, has 200, 423 apartments. 
and it, all those apartments went to this particular guy. And then um, he left and I am doing a lot of apartments. I did like four and well, I'm on my fourth one next week over a period of like eight weeks. So, and they go- Is there, and, is there any value difference? Just curious of being like uh, being west of 95? Yeah. yeah. You mean price, price wise? Like- Oh yeah. Know, or desirability. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the the prices are higher the closer you get into Boston. So sure. um, Newton, the prices are higher, and then Brookline they get higher um, for particularly single family homes. Um, Newton and Brookline have more diverse housing opportunities from condominiums. They have smaller villages. Um, there are also some beautiful estate areas in Newton and Brookline, but there is more variety in those towns, but the prices, particularly for single families, they get higher as you get closer to the city. Um, so Weston and Wells, Weston is about 12 miles from Boston. Wellesley is about the same, you know, 12 to 15 miles down the Mass Pike. You can be from Weston or in Wellesley into Boston in what, like, during the day, 15 minutes 20, or so, 15, 15 20, 20 minutes. But like I, I will tell you this, you yeah. know, uh, this morning it took about 45 minutes to get mm -hmm. to Boston from the Western, you know, the exit over there it was bumper to bumper the whole way. And mm -hmm. sure, like a lot of, you know, cities around the country, Boston has certainly been struggling with traffic. I mean, immensely uh mm -hmm. over the last i was late today i was late today for my appointment yeah yeah so no, i think we were rated either the first or second worst traffic now in the country um you know, however that, yeah that, boston does have an airport in the city oh, which yeah. is unusual yeah. you can be home and you know if there's no traffic minutes, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so is, that's the from a standpoint of affordability obviously you're going to get a better value if you get further out from the city is there a tax advantage the further you go out you know, I think um, it, yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, and then you you finish. I think really depends upon um, you know, what kind of industry is in the town or not. You know, exactly. some towns that don't have much going on, the taxes are incredibly high. Mm -hmm. uh, a town like Dover, a town mm -hmm. like uh Wellesley. But then if you have Needham is actually not that bad in taxes because it Wellesley's has, not bad either. Well, maybe. yeah, Needham has trip advisors headquarters in there. Um, so there are some, you know, again, it really depends on what town. And then also you have to take into consideration Wells Weston has septic systems and a lot of people don't want to buy a house with a septic system. Needham has town sewer and water. Um, Newton has town sewer and water. The non-glamorous part of the job, but it's part of buying a home are the, uh, right. the infrastructure and, and the utilities. Right. Yeah. yeah, so th it doesn't. But on the other hand, Weston has more land because we always lived on, you know, couple acres plus conservation. We always lived in the woods. So that's the difference. If you want to live, you know, have neighbors next door to you, you know, so, then we didn't. What? So even looking at the map, the most obvious difference between Weston and any of the other towns you mentioned is it's green. And all the other towns right. you mentioned, Wellesley, Needham, Newton, they all look kind of gray as if they've been developed. So what is this Weston that's all green? Is it a big park? Am I living in a big forest? What is that? Well, there are um, three golf courses in town. There's an, a tremendous amount of conservation land, and the town is very proud of its conservation land. Um, there's a reservoir that people can not swim in, but walk around as well as there's some, there's the Regis College campus. Um, the town center has a large green and this conservation uh, land sort of dotted all over town. And you're looking at the map where there's a lot of blue. If you zoom in, there's a lot of wetlands and ponds and water. You're looking at Pinebrook Country Club. There's also the Weston Golf Club and, um, and Leo J. Martin. Leo J. Martin is a public golf course. So there's a lot of um, in Weston there. The population is 11,000 and the Wellesley population is 30,000. Mm -hmm. um, it is. Yeah. Appro approximately 30,000. Is that so, all students? Um, is that all students down there? No, no, no. Students. the students, it's a small population of students. Well, Wellesley, of course, is very well known for Wellesley College. So there's students there. Um, Absolutely. Uh, and Wellesley has Babson, Babson. College and Maps Bay Community yeah. College. Uh, Weston has one small college, Regis College, um, which has beautiful grounds and playing fields. And um, 
Weston also has like, you know, schools and. Um, yeah, the schools are excellent there. They're, they're number one by Boston Magazine this this year, but then it changes. There's all, it changes. Then it becomes Lexington or it becomes Wellesley number one. You're always in the top five, but this year with number one, yeah. So that begs the question, who's moving out and what is driving it? It occurs to me that with COVID, one of the uh, reasons is green space. The other that's always been in vogue is great schools. So what's driving the market now post COVID? Well, good schools, really. I mean, that's very, very, very important. They come from all over and a, a lot. We've had people from all over, they wanna go, they went to schools. That's why we moved there because we wanted the schools. That's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. And we needed to be near an airport because my husband traveled all the time and we wanted land. So, I mean, that was the reason that we moved there. And I did live, we did live in Wellesley for a short time and it was in the Cliff Estates. It was a beautiful, beautiful house. And my husband said, oh my goodness. He said, we, we never moved here. I said, well, you wanted a lot of space because we had neighbors, but you didn't have, a, you don't have, a, it's, there's not a lot of neighborhoods in Weston because all the schools are centralized. So the children always go to the same schools. There's two little elementaries that go to the three, can, the preschool to three. Then everybody goes to five, was it for five and six together? And then seven and eight together, middle school, then high school. So they always go together. When John and David and Robert, my children went to school, there was only one elementary school. They all went from kindergarten all the way up, always together. So um, the it, population was lower. Yeah, I think the it was more like 7,000. And actually, one, one elementary school closed while I was there. Yeah. Um, yeah, but compare this is compared to Wellesley, where there are neighborhood schools. Yeah. There are seven elementary schools um, where children can walk to school, and Weston children are bus to schools, and everyone goes to the same school. Yeah, they do. So you know it. You know, you know the kids from when you're five years old throughout the whole town. Yeah. All yeah. right. So we've talked about schools as a driver, mm -hmm. and yeah. I think therefore I'm deducing that most of the people coming out are, are uh, what I'd call the traditional family, parents with kids, okay? Mm -hmm. not, not, not a lot of calling for single professionals in their 20s, right? A lot no, of families. No. And could you say that they're moving out of Boston or yes. are they trading mm -hmm. up? Because they were already mm -hmm. been in the suburbs. Now they're making more money and therefore they're trading up into a better town, better, better school system. Uh, now that they have school age kids, we see some of that in Fairfield County, Connecticut, mm -hmm. where you might start with your million dollar home and trade mm -hmm. up into a two million or three million dollar home True. specifically mm -hmm. to educate the kids. Are you seeing that phenomena? We see that sometimes to trade up. Well, in your but, own case, that's what you did or yeah. we did. Like you bought a house upgraded it, moved to another and then to another and then built one. So you do, you still see that. I trade it up. Where people, um, they, they get, they like the town and they want, yeah, they want something bigger, more land. Um, and yeah. and uh, he also said something about not even, but moving from Boston, yes. Yeah. Because if they have children, little, you know, they can't stay in the little apartment, you know, with, where they have one child, two children, then they start looking and they move to the suburbs. They don't want to, but they do move to the suburbs. Are, they are, do. From a standpoint of affordability, to. are you seeing people struggling with making those next steps compared to like, you know, 20, 30 years ago, life was simpler, things were more affordable. Now it seems like, especially even here in the city, every time you step from two bedroom to three bedroom, three bedroom to four bedroom, that delta is just is just getting larger and larger and larger, and it's more difficult every time. So that people end up what they end up doing is they end up leaving here completely, and they go you know somewhere else where they can afford a much larger house and you know yard, etc. Is that do you see that upgrading becoming much more difficult because of people just more and more people moving there, and also interest rates and everything else? Yeah. I was just saying, 
It's yeah. the interest rates. The interest rates are really so. So, for example, couples that could afford a house for eight hundred or a million, they can't afford that anymore. They have to pay for seven hundred because uh, the interest rates now are seven and a half percent. But I don't uh, see. I'm looking at the map right now, by the way, of Weston, and I see six million seven and a half, two point three five, three point two, three point nine, mm -hmm. five point seven, mm -hmm. seven four. Uh, I only see a handful on the entire page, uh, 875 uh, and, and a million. And I'm imagining those are not four or five bedroom homes. Or is it possible to still get a four or five bedroom home at that million dollar mark? Yeah, uh, well, no, you can't get that. It starts at two million. John has a house on. It's the lowest price. Not two, anymore. Uh, it's not the lowest price. Oh, what is it? Um, there are lower last priced last homes. Week. A couple weeks ago, it was the lowest price. A two million dollar home was a four bed. It's a two million dollar home. For, it's a four bedroom home. But some have come on smaller ones. They've gone in in a matter of days, but as either rehabs or teardowns. So talk yeah. to me about these two on the screen: two million and three million Weston South okay. Avenue, four bedroom, three bath. Is that you know? Is this a? Is this going to fly off the shelf? Um, well, it's been on the market for about a week. What's what's um, this is a very special house. It's called the Jonas Cutter Homestead. It was built in 1850. Um, the homeowners love their home and they did the most beautiful restoration. Um, you know, they they um, upgraded the roof. They put in Marvin windows, which look antique insulated windows. They put in high velocity air conditioning. Um, you could see they did the most exquisite job. Uh, if you scroll over, the kitchen and family room have cathedral ceilings, and it's just beautifully and lovingly restored. Look at the dining room. Everyone says it looks like a Norman Rockwell type dining room where you could have a very you know traditional um, like dinner in there. Um, but there's been a lot of activity because of its price being 2 million um, is, is a good price in Weston, considering a lot of the houses right now are much more for a four bedroom house. Um, the problem is th the, there's the, two problems. There, yeah, there are two problems. challenges. <laughs> um, one is... Um, I love Joni getting right to it. Let's talk about <laughs> right. the problems, people. <laughs> and I use the more gentler <laughs> words. Um, um, it, it doesn't, okay. it doesn't have, um, a garage. There's plenty of room to do a carriage house or a detached garage, um, because it's on an acre of land. Um, it abuts, there is a Pine house Brook behind Country. it, Pinebrook Country Club. It used to be part of a farm, a dairy farm. And, um, it is, um, South Avenue is Route 30, which is a busier road. Many people who move to town want a neighborhood that's quieter. This is not, however, it's set back from the road. It is very quiet inside and the proximity to Boston is incredible. You are right near the beginning, the entrance of the Mass Pike. So you can zip into Boston in like minutes, in like 15, 20 minutes. And is but is an acre lot common or is that unique? No, it's it's a good size lot in this area. The the actually the neighbor's house is around seven plus acres. Yeah. They might have nine. Yeah. Um, and in that area, the, the lots tend to be larger around acre to an acre and a half there are acre and a half lots mostly on the south side. in this particular area but one acre of land and this is all level usable land no wetlands and it's surrounded by woods it's a substantial size lot and the back the backyard and um the other, with, the with, other thing is, is beautiful. two bedrooms on one floor and two bedrooms on the third floor so. you know it's a deal Talking killer about, for roberto and i i mean roberto's a convertible guy he's got a 65 mustang when you said no oh garage, my god i had the first one you, the have, a, you have the same one yeah. I have the same, it's my yeah. wife's Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but okay. the convertible, yeah, I, I drove it till the floor fell out. I got it. Oh God, yeah, I got that. I got that in '64. <laughs> yeah. All right, it was a '64 Craig. and a half, actually. Real quick, yeah, John, '64 John, and a half. The okay. orchard one, Orchard Ave, is uh, right where J uh, what was his name? Was it James uh, Taylor or his brother lived on? on oh yeah, Livingston Taylor lived, lived, lived on Lord Orchard Ave. I don't know if he's still there, but right, that's James Taylor's brother. And my Livingston. my best friend is building that monstrosity of a home on uh, the corner or over there. Oh, right, I drove by, it's spectacular. The land is incredible. Yeah. So because you guys have land there, are people buying houses 
just for the plot of land and how much yeah. how much is an acre well, well we just well we can't go what we what, what i i hate to interrupt but oh, yeah. we had someone that really wanted to buy a lot and so something came on on the laurel lab uh, laurel's what is it laurel road laurel road on this uh, up in the center over off the center of town now there was a little house on it and how many acres and i can't um 1.76 or 1.67 level acres it was a farm with specimen trees and a, like a crummy old home that was that was, no one lived in it so, uh, wait, so the they, land is spectacular they had Epic. 20 offers and we had the highest our guy bought it for 2.4 million a piece so of a land. nice p an a plus piece of land in a west plus. Coast. A and two, and a half. Half. 20, two and a half 20 offers and it, same thing in wellesley for same thing in wellesley the same thing and we were actually interviewed by um the boston globe about this transaction some similar ones where building lots are going for 2.4 2.5 million this land if you were to sell it a year later it would be the same or more it is very rare like it doesn't have any it, it's completely level with specimen trees. Sometimes you buy a building lot and it has ledge. You need to do um, a tremendous amount of site work. And this is on a prime street. This was an A plus lot. Okay, it was, uh, Craig, Craig, you, Craig yeah. reality check. I, I, I need a sanity check. Is this the exception? <laughs> okay. Because nowhere in Fairfield County do I know of a piece of land, any piece of land that I could put on for two and a half million dollars and there'd be 20 people bidding on it. Is that the well, exception? <laughs> yeah, well, that is exception. That is in a neighborhood in Weston. Um, albeit, you know, I think one of the reasons um, land is very expensive there also is because you can't just tear down a home. And there's a lot of um, old roads there. The conservation, the, the, the town of Weston doesn't just allow you to do what you want to do. You got to go mm -hmm. through a lot of different levels to get things done. And that's why a town like Needham has really come on the map because there is no wait time for demolition. If you wanna knock down a house in Needham, you can file the, the paperwork right away. You can buy that piece of land for 800 to a million, about a quarter of an acre, and then you can build you know, a 3,500 to 4,000 square foot house. Like this one? This is like one the, of the two you just sold in Needham, right? Correct, yes. So. Beautiful house that's about on an acre of uh, an acre of land and that got about 3.4 um, on is a that, is, that, is that the one on 700 chestnut? That's it. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So, Gorgeous. yeah, Gorgeous. beautiful house. Um, and again, that's why Needham has really been a great area for a lot of people. A, it's a little bit more affordable than a Weston and a Wellesley because um, it's not directly on the east west corridor, the Mass Pike. So you have to kind of hit 95 uh, for a couple exits, but Needham has really grown tremendously over the last probably five years. And I'll give you a perfect example. And actually to touch on what Roberto said before I forget, you asked, and so did John, you guys asked about why are people, who are the buyers coming to the suburbs? And mm -hmm. it, yes, John and Joni made a great point with the families, you know, so on and so forth. But please don't forget that Boston is the number one life science um hub in mm -hmm. the world so mm -hmm. not only is moderna here you have all these major companies that are sourcing mm -hmm. people from all over the world and they're coming and they're like where do we go they get a little sticker shock when they get to a place like um you know newton or wellesley and you know they want to buy one of those three or four thousand square foot houses so they end up going a little bit towards needham but if you look at needham five years ago a new construction house, 4,000 square feet, was about 1.5, 1.6. Now yeah. there's one on Manning that's on the market for 2.4 that's going on. So I sold 2.8, Matt. Matt yeah. So Pinewood would construct. What's the commuting time difference? Office. What's the commuting time difference to downtown Boston from like so West End? I and think Needham? if you're in West End, you have direct access. So it's always going to be a little bit quicker. Um, you know, Needham can range you. It's it's only like 12 or 13 miles, but you know, some days could take you an hour because the traffic is horrendous the whole way. But if there's no traffic during the day, it should be about 25 to 30 minutes without traffic. And you have Trip Advisors World Headquarters there. Um, you know, and not only that, just so you guys know, Boston also has DraftKings, Legos, which is just moving from Connecticut. Oh, yeah. They're mm -hmm. putting their headquarters in Boston. What is 
Legos. Legos. Oh. So Car when Google. I look at the map of prices, I am seeing uh, 875, 2.6, 899, 3.4. So I see a range here where I see a whole lot more choice at the million, million and a yeah. half dollar level up to and three in need. That's rate. because you can you can also buy townhouses here, which mm. less than it's very difficult to, to do that kind of development. So again, Needham has a lot more options for you know teardowns and, and other things that you can get creative with um and unlike a town like wellesley and weston that just doesn't allow for that kind of development how are the schools but i i want the number one school system i'm a i'm a school snob so again joni made a perfect uh analogy a lot of it the new ones just came out but a lot of it's interchangeable the yeah. Needham school system is ranked i think 21 out of however many towns i think weston was in the top 10 so one, again, number one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, well, Boston Latin was actually number one, which you have to test into. It's a public school in Boston. Oh, uh, okay. You have to test into it, which is not always easy for everybody. But again, so as long as you're in that quarter, that Weston, that Wellesley, the Needham, you have Brookline, which is obviously tremendous schools. I mean, those are the top schools, I would say, you know, Lexington. <laughs> And Winchester, and for, for all you guys that are baseball fans, we have a property in Winchester that we got under uh, contract the other day, who, if you're baseball fans, it's Pedro Martinez's house. So, uh, oh, yeah, that. he used to live at Allendale, Pedro. Yes, he did. He's lived a lot of different places. But, <laughs> Where's the know. address? Wait. Uh, one, so one Socrates uh, Lane in Winchester. One Socrates, okay. That's no C-R-A-T-S. So, Again, Boston is thriving. It's a, um, you know, between the hospitals, the schools, you know, the education, the life sciences, the corporations, the banking, the proximity to Europe makes Massachusetts and its suburbs a very desirable and place. And how about we're, we're on like the Atlantic Ocean. So if you want to go the ocean. Sea, if you want to go to the Cape, you want to go to the beach, you, you know, like an hour away for the best beach. If you want to go skiing, skiing, you're an hour away from the best skiing. In fact, the condo I just sold um, that I'm selling now, uh, you, they look up right out into the Blue Hills, the Blue Hills. They see the people skiing in the winter. Yeah. So Rhode we, Island, Newport. Yeah, right, Providence. right. But yeah. what, what Boston is, you you know, that's why we live here. The, my husband was from Chicago. He couldn't go to, he couldn't go to an ocean. There was a lake. And he couldn't go skiing. He have to go. I don't know Wisconsin. I don't know where he went. But so he moved to Boston. So we were talking a lot about west and kind of southwest. What's above north of west and northwest? Oh, Are there west. options there or not? Yeah, Lexington, which is a great town. Winchester, yeah. which I just said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Concord is a little Concord northwest. Yep, and then you have like on the water up you know by swamp scott and marblehead uh, you know, yeah those are just very hard to get to if you're they're not easy places to get to so you have to unless you're coming from boston there is no direct route there so it could take a long time getting through there's only one way in and one way out over to swamp scott and marblehead what's Thanks. the hot suburb what's the hot suburb that's just being discovered i would imagine wellesley weston that's the that's the gold standard but it has been for a very long time because school system and uh strict zoning uh means that there's scarcity not a lot of new development going on in wellesley weston so where are people focusing their energies now if they're priced out of wellesley weston well I mean, I think like, again, you, you try to find the a little bit further out. So you look at a town like Natick. Um, mm -hmm. which, Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, it's become a lot more affordable. School systems are good. Um, Natick is, again, you know, right off of the Mass Pike. So it's about 40 minutes outside a, a good town. Um, Westwood, but Westwood's already there. You Westwood's know. good. Westwood's yeah. good. Westwood's a good town over there. Um, and then if you go north and south, I think, you know, a town that's certainly really hot that a lot of people like is Hingham and Cohasset. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, so right down hot. there. Where's um, that? Yeah, where's that? Yeah, go right there. Further. Yep, right there. Hingham and Cohasset. Oh. Up on, yeah, right on the water over there. Situate. Um, again, that's a long commute for Boston, but they do Unless have- Unless there's a boat, there's a ferry or there's something. A, there's a boat from Hingham that goes right into Boston and people commute every day on the boat. Um, 
which is and it's not like talk about that. We, we just did the Jersey Shore and this looks just like Red Hook to me. I mean, this looks like Jersey Shore where all of a sudden a seaside community, everybody decided, you know what? I don't, this isn't just a summer uh, gig. I think I could live there year round and get to Boston a couple days a week. Now that my boss is allowing me to commute a couple days a week, this is a manageable commute. Is that one of the reasons why Hingham and Sit Situate are suddenly in vogue? Yeah, because it, the proximity miles wise into Boston, it's really close. But because of 93, the expressway being clogged up the entire way, it could take you an hour and a half to get into Boston from there. So mm -hmm. the, the ability to hop on a ferry into the city, sure, it makes it very desirable for a lot of people. Is the desirability of being south southwest desirable because it's closer to the Cape as well? I don't know if that really I don't know if that I mean, people like obviously being on the water and both of those towns have great school systems. Mm -hmm. um, again, it is, you know, it's only about 45 minutes to the Cape if you're over there, which is certainly nice if you have a summer house down on the Cape in the islands. But again, I, I, you do have it's a it's a beautiful seaside town, both of them, all three of them. So yeah. are you telling me that a banker with a high pressure job who has to be at the desk early in the morning is going to live in Hingham and rely on a ferry boat to get him to work in the morning? Really? No. Doubtful. I, mean, <laughs> okay. Okay. I would say they would be in Brookline or Newton or in the city or they a lot of them have, you know, a condo in the city. Do they? Do they? Is that becoming more common to have like a just a pied a terre or something just so that you can hang your hat if you have late meetings or something? You don't have to go back out. Yeah, you nailed it. I mean, we have the first raffles in the United States, uh, which is a combination of a hotel slash um, condo building. And then you have a lot of the Four Seasons has a new building. The Ritz is building an additional building. You have uh, an amazing amount of luxury buildings that are offering a lot of people, you know, they have a pied a terre. I mean, the Raffles is offering options for people to, you know, buy a place. It's like almost like a standard one oversized large hotel room. But what they do is the, the Raffles will then rent it out the days that you're not going to be there, clean right. it every day. So it's a way for them to make a few extra bucks as well. So yes, a lot of people, because of the commute, if they can snag a one bedroom condo that they could use on the weekends, certainly happening a lot more, not to the, the degree of New York City, but for Boston, it's, it's certainly happening. What's the budget you need to do something like that? In a luxury building, you, you need for a one bedroom, it's about a million to a million five, yeah. I would say. Sounds right. We're about 800, not, 1200 square feet, roughly, depending. It's on not the, different from here. Yeah. I mean, we've gotten very expensive. We don't have the, the size of New York. We're a lot smaller, but, you know, everything's compacted into a really small area. So our prices skyrocketed over the last five years. Mm -hmm. yeah, that surprised me how small Boston is. Very small. Which makes it really intimate, actually. Mm -hmm. And your New York Post lovely writer, Cindy Adams, completely trashed us, uh, I think, last week. She came, to a Red Sox, she came to a Red Sox game, and then she wrote a, an op-ed in the New York Post saying how she did not like Boston. Uh, she was not a big fan. It was, it, you should go we find like her. her. <laughs> who, 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 Cindy Adams. Cindy She's Adams. the one that says only in New York, baby, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Right, but no, but the Red Sox just fired their, their general manager. Yes, Chaim Bloom. Yeah, an hour ago. An hour ago. Right. And yeah. he's not, what a great uh, New Year present for him too, huh? Boston is a big That's sports, right. it's a big sports and music yeah, town. I was thinking of that. Or he could have waited another week. Yes. Yeah. Art and culture, it has, it has a, it's the, yeah. It is. It Athens has of America. Talk to me about the market generally now that we've talked about little pockets of the market talk to me about the suburban market versus the urban markets i mean i i think i live in the suburban market roberto thinks all about new york and and he talks to me about inventory levels in the city and so i'd like to understand boston how's the market and how is the boston market affecting the suburban market post covid well if you want Where's the inventory boston? levels I'll start with Boston and let John and Joni kind of, you know, talk about the suburbs. Um, mm -hmm. Boston had a lot of, you know, similar issues, like a lot of people coming out of COVID. 
a lot of people were exiting and moving out. And, and a lot of that has certainly changed over the last, I would say, 12 months where people are, are back in the city. A lot of companies, yeah. Amazon just built two uh, buildings in the seaport and they're making it mandatory, I think four or five day weeks. So hence why the traffic is getting a little bit larger. Um, but at the same time, Boston's also, you know, I think it's a little bit overpriced right now, you know, for, for what you can get. At the new St. Regis in on the seaport, you have square footage up to, they're getting $5,000 a square foot on some of those units over there, which is very New York City billionaire row-esque. So what's happened in Boston is that we've we forced to bring in either the super wealthy or people from all over the world that are, that are investing money because it's become not affordable to the average you know person it's very very expensive so you know a lot of that has said people along with interest rates right if you're not a seller right now you don't need to be a seller why sell if you're especially if you're stuck on a really good rate so i think boston has has run into a little bit of that however we we do have a, a, a our nightlife is not new york but it's certainly growing we added the encore casino which is right now oh, before you get away from that inventory levels are where versus i would say London. inventory levels are going to show you like on they're a little bit probably heavy right now in the city and you, we're not even showing you the half of all the stuff on ml that's not even appearing that's on ml we're not cuz yeah. it's on it's on wing and the winthrop you know that big gorgeous i was there the other day yeah you were there oh you were there yesterday we saw your it it was it's such a beautiful building and one of my clients had bought pre-construction like 4.7 for 2000 square foot now it's only 54 percent sold out there and uh they're starting to rent them they are let's put a percentage on it would you say that the city inventory levels are down a third while we're seeing suburban inventories down by two thirds versus what we what, what you're seeing in the uh, pre-COVID. Would you say we're down a little bit or are we back to normal inventory levels in the city? Yeah, I think we are. I think we had a we we had more of a problem uh, prior to COVID with inventory in Boston versus after because a lot of people left. Right. So um, inventory then opened up. And then again, um, I think we are, we have, we're a little bit inventory heavy in the condo market, but it's probably low on the brownstone market. That's, that's the way I'll look at it, especially like a single family brownstone. Those are few and far to come by. Um, and again, it really depends. And if you're looking for a certain budget price wise, you're not going to touch Beacon Hill, Back Bay, um, Seaport. Okay. Yeah. For under like 1200 a square foot. Um, so deal least. volume is lower. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Prices are up, deal volume is lower, and inventory is not is not significantly lower. So it's not a function of inventory and scarcity. It's uh what 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 is driving these prices? So real quick, I'll give you some stats. Condo sales fell by 16% over uh, year over year last month. Um, and it's essentially the same amount of units that were sold. So it's 927 in 2023 versus like 1113 in 2022. Is so, it fair to say that the sellers have not, uh, 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 there's a lagging effect and sellers have not repriced that inventory. Um, there's plenty of inventory. There's plenty of choice. Buyers are not jumping. Transaction levels have come down. And now we're waiting for sellers to respond. Yeah, well, I'm sure like anywhere else in the country, right? Like there's that big disconnect between the sellers and the buyers. Sellers still think their prices are worth, you know, 2021, 2022, and they're not ready to give up. Certainly on the developer side, when you look developers, that's where I'm seeing a log in the the inventory out in the suburbs is that developers are stuck on their prices. They're not moving. They're not budging. And now we're starting to see 120, 180 days. So we'll, it'll be interesting over the next like three to four months, what happens? So have they increased, awesome. have they increased incentives and things like that? Like paying attorney's fees, taxes, et cetera. Little, not much though. I mean, a lot of the d- new construction, not much, not, I'm not seeing unless John and Joni are, are seeing anything different out in the suburbs. Yeah. All right. So let's turn to the suburbs, John and Joni. Are we seeing the same phenomenon? I would imagine there's a flight to quality 
Well, that's why we started talking about Weston and Wellesley. There's a flight to quality. Is that continuing flight to quality or are they starting with the best that they can afford? What do you think? What, what do I think? Well, what I was going to say is uh, I think that the big, big houses, the new constructions, they've come down a little bit. They really have. They've come down. They're negotiating on them, whereas previously they didn't negotiate on them, mm -hmm. like uh, Cranmore and uh, Arnold and that. They didn't negotiate. Now they're, they're they're negotiating a little bit, but we have this one that we put under agreement that you have the picture of a Pleasant Street, and that went on for three million dollars, and we got a little over asking. And it's not on a high end, you know, the biggest end, high end street. And it was an unusual house. It's a beautiful house at the stage, but it has a really unusual, uh, an floor illusional plan, yeah. floor plan. Two master bedrooms on the first floor. Four car garage. Four car garage, you know, it isn't. But it, it is beautiful. That is staged, yeah. But um, we did get, but I'm finding the last four sales I made, they're all cash cash that was it yeah. and mostly no spec no inspections three out of four so, were no inspections so things aren't on the market that long it depends it depends, it depends. When, if they're overpriced if people start to think oh i'm going to put it on for seven million and they're not worth it people are more educated now they're seeing a couple of them coming down so they've seen a couple of them coming down this was priced correctly though this was priced well. Yes, they mm -hmm. wanted a like price. The one that you just sold, over, you said just over asked, just over like three million. The one you just sold, like how off? How long was that on the market? How many showings did you have? Uh, it was on the market. Every single single four last things I sold were on the market on the weekend and sold on, on the first weekend. Mo yeah, Monday. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's. But three, three of them were condos, and the condos were, uh, you know, in in the eights and nines. That was a Newton eights and nines and so you this know. is a turnkey house this, that needs no work no work it's they, from people 2018 don't, people don't want to do work when they came from when they came from boston right they come from boston the wife works the husband works they don't want to do any work they don't want anything they just want a perfect house and that's it nothing else and that's what we're running into if they need work they don't want to do it so it's the same yeah, thing that's happening in new york the premium the pre right now the going premium for a turnkey apartment is 30% over something that needs work. That's quite a substantial difference. Mm -hmm. John and I just came back from Lexington because we're putting a house on in Lexington, which is a great town, mm -hmm. you know, great, great town, mm -hmm. great schools because it's near, uh, well, it's yeah, that what, what, well, route two it goes to Cambridge. Cambridge so a lot of doctors and, and, doctors and everything. It's all high near Harvard, you know. Yeah. So, so, but you know, it was oh my god, it looked horrible. So <laughs> it was yeah. uh, it's it's better now because we had the whole thing painted. I mean, they painted everything. Simply white. And, yeah. yeah so there was a lot of wallpaper oh, from the seventies. We had it taken off. We did all that, and I'm still not. It still is, you know top but it looks better so what we have to do is we get to fix them up when i even do a condo uh and before i get the photographer in i'm fixing up or i get a stager in one of the guys that worked for us doug nahigi and he works and he used to he was home trends he used to uh, uh, in um, Chris, Christmas tree shops, he ran that until it closed. And so he just had to make a bed, puff up the sofas and everything. We fix up things, we bring in plants, and then, you know, we sell it. You just can't sell something anymore that with dirty dishes in the sink and messy and a bed unmade. We make the beds, we fix them. We have to fix them up. They have to look like, oh my gosh, it looks great. Well, they painted and then, everything white and strip wallpaper. Yeah, that was but a big then, uh, you know, when the when when the customers leave, we just go back to normal. But but the customer came you in. Scrunch up the bed when they leave. You yeah, yeah, the yeah. Back up. the pillows. He did this. He did that. But then I, today, I, I am going to observe that the all the listings you just showed me that you've listed and sold immediately all have perfect white on white kitchens, perfect <laughs> white on white bathrooms, yeah. a little bit no. of charm in the living room, maybe some you know rustic floors, no. but they are. Perfect. And and that's what you're telling me is that uh, that's what people are wanting. Can we put a number on it? Meaning what is how 
what is the premium people are willing to pay for new or perfect white stylish white perfect new what's the pre are they willing to pay an extra 10 percent for something that's uh up to date and they're basically willing to basically punish something 20 percent or more if it needs an over uh, i'd say so oh yeah what do you think the, craig yeah between 10 the, or your 20%. house has always looked great yeah I mean, yeah yeah, I mean, first of all, I think we all can agree that uh, buyers cannot, they have a hard time like looking at a home that needs work and figuring out where to even begin, right? So a lot of them don't even look at older homes. But yeah, I think you guys are probably spot on, you know, as far as, you know, how many want that clean look. But again, it's all about what they can afford. You know, I, I have to tell a, a funny story. Yesterday, I got a call from an 81 year old couple. They've been in their house 43 years. They said, come price it. It's a teardown. I'm like, I'll be the judge of that. I get there. Yeah. It's a 1912 house, eight bedrooms on, mm -hmm. <laughs> on six acres with an eight car garage and barns and all that. And I thought, oh, this is beautiful. It looks like Tara it's right out of Gone with the Wind. And then I thought to myself, and then I, I smack, smack, smack. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know anybody who needs an eight bedroom house. Mm -hmm. right now i mean i haven't met anybody in two years who says you know what i need john i need an eight bedroom house so first of all an eight bedroom house with servants quarters yeah that's kind of out of fashion too so by mm -hmm. the time i left and i after a, a bit of smacking um i was convinced <laughs> yeah you're right it's really hard to sell uh what is probably a million and a half two million dollar project and so I was actually, I started in at maybe pricing that at maybe, I don't know, $2 million. By the time my team argued with me, I was down in between, you know, below the market for a project like that is below $2 million. And I'm going to be hard pressed to find uh, one of these uh, millennials flush with cash yeah. who's got the time and the effort and the money and the willingness and the experience to put a 1912 house back together. And by the way, so if I write off all those 70 million millennials and say, well, none of them is going to buy it. And I go look to the people who have experience, people like John Shore and Joni Shore, who have experience flipping houses and turning them over and renovating them. They're in the part of time of life where they're also not looking for an eight bedroom house. No. You know, yeah, maybe maybe renovate a, you know, a beach a two bedroom. That's right? Right? You said six acres, yeah. John? Yeah. Six acres. What's the land acres. worth? With the alone. barn and the main house, the barn. It's it's a land sale, yeah. and, and in fact, that's what the eighty year old couple said. And and by the way, it's a beautiful house, and is going to be a great deal of emotion, you know, uh, in, in this sale because. But they have finally come to terms with the fact that uh, the house has been let go. It did have some burst pipes. It's got some damage to it. So it's going to be a real challenge. They they said to me when I arrived, they said, we know this is a land sale. We know it. It's a land sale. It's a tear down. What town? What town? In, it's in uh, New Canaan. It's right here in New Canaan where the average so, house. So is how much two, is the land in New Canaan? How much is the land on a good street? So I would say at the peak when we had 3% interest rates, we had builders speculating and they were paying mm -hmm. million and a half, million eight for a primo mm -hmm. lot. Uh, but I think that that uh, has come down to maybe the million three to million three for a primo lot. And I know of one or two one acre lots in New Canaan in the 900s. And they'll probably sell. Those will be the first to sell the ones in the 900s because a builder can can build, uh, can buy a nine hundred and, and build for just under three million dollars. They can $3 million, put a nice three million dollar five bedroom house up. And um, and know that they're going to sell it quickly with with a, with the least amount could of you, carry. Could you subdivide that that property, or is that we have um, we have one acre, two acre, and four acre zone? And as you know, as it's a national movement to say, hey, listen, why are we zoning for four acres? You know, that's a thing of the past. We need to make things more affordable. Uh, one of the challenge with up zoning the four acre zone is that there's a lot of ledge, there's a lot of wetlands and um, our ability to cram two septic systems in some of these places is, uh, is limited. So, um, but maybe technology uh, septic technology will allow us to get more efficient with our septic systems and we'll be able to do that. I don't know. Um, but do right now it's four, it's six acres in the four acre zone. 
So it's so not something do a, edible. Do a mounded septic system. You know what I mean by a mounded? The engineers, yeah, they, they figure know. it out. Yeah, that's what I've been through this so many times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So one one of the strategies to make it more affordable here, and that we're looking at, is uh, accessory dwelling units. Is that some? Is that a thing? I know it's a thing in California. Is it a thing in the suburbs of Boston? Are we talking about uh, building a, a cottage or renovating cottages on the property, or is that not a thing? It's unusual. unusual. It's unusual. Yeah. You got to have yeah. multiple dwellings, I think, you know, on, on the property if you're even allowed to. Um, yeah. And it goes but town I, by town. I sold a farm last year and it had the main house, a Greek revival house that needed an enormous amount of work, it had a big red barn and it had an accessory guest cottage. That was a lot going on. I know, but you sold it for like one four. One five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's not land. a thing. It's not a thing. And people don't prescribe any value to it. Are you kidding? I don't me? know what they don't... everybody wants one. Everybody wants an accessory <laughs> dwelling. They want a gym. They want a Zoom room. They, mm -hmm. they want or they want a mother-in-law apartment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I can't yeah. believe it's not a thing in Boston. All right. I want to get back to the beach. I'm going to hit share screen. We're going back to the beach with Craig. What is this in New Seabury, Massachusetts? Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. A million so, three. Uh, that oh, sounds like a bargain. Uh, with ocean views. And, and yeah, uh, wow. The, yeah. Look that's that. so it's in a quaint little village in New Seabury, which is New Seabury is in a uh, community within the Mashpee limits. So it's all in the South Cape, about an hour and 20 minutes from Boston. Um, it's a resort style community. That's the way I like to say it with a brand, brand new um, uh, fitness club with a huge pool, oversized pool. We have tennis courts, obviously pickleball courts. And then this particular, unit, then there's a beach club where you actually pay, you know, part of your uh, membership cost. They will put out your, your chairs for you. They'll, they'll bring you drinks. There's a bar on the beach. There's a restaurant. The land, the developable land is owned by Carl Icahn, which I'm sure you New Yorkers know. So he went on and built like four different sections. But this particular uh, cottage is really unique. It's called Mashup Village. They bought it last year this time and they completely gutted it out. And How much did they pay for it? It paid 1.1 and we put it on for 1.24. <clears throat> So they did all the all the work. They hired top of the line um, people. They got everything they done. Did. Yeah, they did. A, this they is did a secondary a home community. This is uh, a lot of it is. Yeah. And yeah. the rental the rental market is extremely strong. Um, prime time, you could get like a thousand bucks a night there. Um, so, wow. you know, seven to 10 grand a week down there. I, you know, not too bad. Um, oh, yeah. okay. That's your private beach. That's right. Beautiful. Up there. Yeah, it's beautiful. And um a lot of people like it. Papa Nested Marketplace is within walking distance, and that's a cute little market with restaurants and shops and coffee. So, how far is this from Newport? Uh, well, far because you, you, there's no direct way to get to Newport from there. You got to get off the Cape and then go down to Newport. Got it. So it's got probably it. like an hour, uh, two hours. But is this, is this entire gray rectangle of housing one uh, one development? That's all part of New Seabury. That's just the mosh up village right there. So there's okay. also the cottages, which are, uh, they started at about one, two, up to two million. And those are uh, roughly uh, uh, about three to four bedroom, uh, 3,000, 3,500 square feet, which is another community within there. And then these all little offsets. Bob Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, has a home on Papanesset Island down there. So um, a, a wonderful place to kind of feel like a, drive an hour and a half or hour and 20 minutes away from Boston and you feel like you're, you're somewhere very different. Wow. That's great. Yeah, and this is not. five hours old, this listing? Five hours old, <laughs> correct. Yep. So hopefully how fast, can... how fast will it, how, <laughs> uh, is, this a, is this going to be a multiple bid situation? Is there just no inventory in there or is this one of a couple it's choices? Not many. But again, it's off season, so you got to sort of you're not going to be able to use it for most of the uh, the winter. So I think mm -hmm. it's going to be a mindset for people. But I do have a private showing set up for tomorrow at 10 a.m. So we will see. Um, but so can I get the 930 slot? Yeah. And then so you're going to so you're going to drive there from the seaport <laughs> and it's going to take you how long? Um, and it's tomorrow reverse commute. Not bad. I'll do the showing and I'll come back. 
um, just in time before this Hurricane Lee comes. And we have, you know, uh, I have no idea where this thing could go. It could track, you know, Nantucket looks like it's it's on it, it's on its course, but um, we'll see. So that's why I did open houses scheduled for the following weekend, just because. Is that Lisa? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> that is Lisa. Hey, hi, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> hi, Lisa. Hollywood Squares. Real quick, John. Squares, right. For you, the lobster roll, right? Because you guys yes. are from, I'm assuming it's a hot lobster roll. Yes, sure. But you get the best at Palm Vanessa. At, at, at yes, that's the best. I like them. We have what? a bar, which is very yeah, good. Yeah, bar is the best. I know because I go mortgage out to buy it. It's like uh, fifty right now. For a lobster roll. The thirty dollars a roll, something like that. More probably. More. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, what I was saying, John, is that uh, it, when you get a, a house. And you have to list a condo or a house. You try to fix it up, paint it up, and make it look good. So it's very inviting. Well, of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I've got another. We're, we'll keep going on show and tell. Uh, I'm still at the beach, and <laughs> I don't have a million three for that sexy little development that you just put on the market. But I do have $800,000, and I'm all excited about 16 Brant Rock in Mashpee, Massachusetts. Talk to me about this one. Who's going to buy this one? And you know, what's where, what's the appeal? Well, so again, in the same community, Mashop Village, which they don't really have rental restrictions. So you can rent it out. This one needs a lot of work, in my opinion. I'm not sure. This one was signed, I think, in a couple of days, though. And it's also under a million dollars. You know, jo Joni and I are looking at this and we're like, a little bit of paint, this thing will be good as new. <laughs> yeah. hey, I'm, I'm looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, a little paint. yeah you got to fix it up a little. Yeah, ceiling wall. You have to put some plants in, some flowers, yeah. you know. Fix <laughs> I don't think we're floor. doing the pickled walls anymore, are we, Joni? <laughs> no, pickled no. walls, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can, I mean, that's great rental income. And then to be honest with you, I don't know if that one has any water views or not, but um, mm. it's only a two bed, one bath, I believe. But it's I a huge market for something like this because not everybody has tons of money and they just want a place where they can rest their head and get out of the city. I think it's great. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love this at $7.99. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah. It's amazing. A and with the, sh well, so let's talk about that rental market. So if I bought this and I'm able to use it in, let's say, the shoulder seasons, but I'm going to rent it out in high season, um, is there a big market for that? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Labor Day, uh, the Cape is, is extremely <laughs> from all over the world that want to be there. Plus your proximity to the islands, both Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. Um, and I know Nicole is on here, is, is really close. You can take the ferry over from each one of those, the fast ferry from Hyannis. Um, so a lot of people like to come down here on vacation. Um, and I do think that, you know, the demand is great. And, you know, depending upon how you advertise and you promote your rental, you know, there's a lot of money to be had. Um, and I think the- so, Doug's doing the rental. Yeah. Yeah. So- uh, mm -hmm. So, All right. What? Well, give me some more good ideas. So, what's the difference between this? I guess this is New Seabury, but we were talking about uh, Skituit. Is this further out? That's this north to it. Skituit. Yeah. Is that north? Yep. Mashpee, New Seabury is obviously the Cape, and then you get into a town. Another great town is Osterville, which has got extremely oh. high. Wait. Um, so, where I I see Skituit, I see Hingham. Where yep. in relation? To those, uh, was the Seabury we just looked at? Well, that's the it's South the Shore. Bridge. You've got to go down to, and go over the uh, over the, the, the Cape Cod Canal, go yep. all the way down, and then yep. you're in Cape Cod. Once you go over the bridge, the Cape Cod, but by Bourne, that's where the canal is. See where Bourne is in Sandwich? Yeah. Okay. Um, where the arms? There, right there. That's where Cape Cod starts. Oh, there's where your mash beat. Down there here. you go. There you are. And that whole arm is Cape Cod. So you have to go over the canal in order to be in Cape Cod. It says, welcome to Cape Cod. And you get okay. over the bridge. Or the Sagamore Bridge over at Route 3 or 6. So or Situate Hingham, that's South Shore. C Cape Cod is over the canal. Yeah. So we've just looked at $7.99 to one three in this Mashpee Cape Cod neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about South Shore neighborhood. Am I likely, if I say... I like that idea, but I really want to be on South Shore. 
Are the prices higher or lower South Shore? It's different. It's different. Yeah. It's, it's different. different. Those are more residential. So I think right. like the ability to rent them is 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 limited because I don't okay. think I'll go there. Um, but you know, you can buy a four thousand square foot house and you know, hang them for six million bucks, five million bucks if it's right on the water, at least. Um, so, you know, the pricing could be, you know, really high up in that area. Again, I, you know, for us, I think a lot of the vacation stuff down in the Cape and the islands, is, those are the money makers. And if you guys have been watching anything about Nantucket, you all know, you know, we opened an office there and Nantucket is so hot, you know, that's where the billionaires go now. And a lot of people like it because you can't just drive there. You got to fly there or boat there. So it, it attracts a lot of, you know, for people looking for privacy that don't want to be bothered. That's why Nantucket has gotten. And like John, my son, John always says, you can't be a poor billionaire with three or 4 billion, you can have 10 or 12, <laughs> right? <laughs> billion. My gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. intrigued by this. So I've, I've blown up <clears throat> Skituate on the map and I just wanted to look at, you know, what can... What, is, what can I get? And you're right, 3.3 and 5.9 on the water, but I am seeing a two bedroom for $7.99. Uh, I guess it's a condo. So I can get into a condo in Skituate and you're saying it's a tough commute, but it's but it's possible, right? Hour long commute? More. More, okay. All right. Yeah. But S Situate, Cohasset, Hingham, those are somewhat suburbs of Boston, you're on the water, but when you get into the Cape, the topography of the land, the lifestyle is completely different. Right. It feels more vacation. Um, you have more sandy beaches, the air is different. Um, the, the, the towns, you have villages, it's, it's, it's different. Wouldn't you say, Craig, it's, it's, it's different down there. Um, yeah. Once you cross the bridge go over the Sagamore or the Vaughan Bridge. It's like a different different world. I mean, it's like you take a deep breath. Oh, you have I'm like here. rambling roses right. and sandy I mean, beaches, some are rocky. It's, it's just, beautiful. it feels like the topography, the land is 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 different than the South, than the South Shore. Yeah, it's beachy. It's beachy, right. <laughs> All right, we should wrap up. Can you give me your predictions? Craig, John, Joni, give me your predictions. And, uh, and let's get back to Weston. Wellesley. Uh, we're now hitting record prices in those the most desirable suburbs of west of Boston. I, well, is let me just say something. where's your prediction for the next 24 hours? I, I, but John, you were looking at average prices. Yeah. The average price John has um read. yeah, from for the past 12 months into September, the average sale price in Weston is two million nine seven six. The median is two two three zero. Prices have gone up thirteen point seven nine percent. Wellesley, the average sale price for the past twelve months, single family home, is two million two eight eight, up seven point eight five percent from last year. The medium sales price being two million dollars. Um, these towns will always continue to do well. They're desirable. Um, inventory is still low. I don't see much change in the market. Do you? Um, I think it's things less are, inventory. there's less inventory. Things with the um, with the rates have changed things. It's quieter um, oh, yeah. than we expected for the fall market. It wasn't as busy as we'd expected. The problem is that the, the rates, people that wanted to buy in the spring said, well, it's 5%. I'll wait till the rates go down. Well, they went up. So they're waiting, they're waiting, but look at, I have to release my car. And I was, it was over a few months ago. And, even, and the dealer said to me, wait a few months because the rates will go down and you'll get a better price on the same car. And you know what, the rates went up. So, <laughs> so, my, so I wanna know what's the prediction if you're saying we saw a 13% price appreciation, mm -hmm. and, but now we've got a, a different in interest rate environment but we're still light on inventory and that's not gonna change. Are you seeing price appreciation and at what level for the next year? I think for me, really what I'm, as long as inflation has been curbed and interest rates don't continue to rise because if they do rise at the next meeting and they do go up, you know, 7% may look pretty good down the road depending upon how everything turns out. But if they're saying what, you know, I believe to be hopefully true, 
I think prices will start to, as long as interest rates drop down a little bit, what I think will happen is then they'll become more sellers because we need more sellers. And once they get to that under 6%, I think they'll say, okay, that's a number that I'm a little bit more comfortable with. Hopefully, again, I don't know how everybody thinks. And then, but what I do see in the very near future is I think it's going to be a tougher fourth quarter. And I do think that people that are going to be, that are going to need to sell, there, there will be some deals to have, to have in, you know, October, November, and December this year. I really, there always is, but this year more than ever, I think there's going to be some, some deals to, to be had. Well, Powell, see, Powell I, said that, the rate, that, that he's going to push up the rates again. He's thinking. Are those deals later. in the fourth quarter going mm -hmm. to drive expectations in the first and second? It's a great question. Uh, um, yeah. they, you know, I think a lot of it, if a lot of it depends upon inventory levels, right? And the suburbs continue not to have inventory and still, then the prices will continue to still stay high. Um, so I think a lot of that is predicated on, on- You always have more buyers in the spring, always more buyers and you have, and so, you know, the houses will be gobbled up quicker because if there's less inventory and more buyers, I, we went through this with the pandemic. There was no in, less inventory, more buyers, and we're selling everything. Three, th th uh, 300,000 over, 200,000 over. There was, it was bidding wars if the- if The rates were low. The rates were low. The rates were low. But now, uh, but we always have more buyers in the spring. There's not a lot of buyers out there now. I don't see a lot. Do you, Craig, for the uh, houses? I don't see as no. many as the spring. Yeah, I think a lot of people are holding unless they, they are being transferred for work or they, they have right. to a bigger place for some sort of particular reason. I think a lot of people are on hold right now. All right. We'll see. But thank you for having us. I really appreciate it. We love having you. Thank you so it much. Was great it, was fun. it was fun. How did we really do? Great. I think you did <laughs> really great. I think. I think this is something bankable. I think that uh, people were are, are were waiting. I think what we're learning from you is you have an opportunity to pounce in the fourth quarter, and then all those new buyers are going to show up first quarter next year. So that's right. A limited window to call Joni Shore to get to get into Weston, Massachusetts. Limited window. <laughs> I mean, that's I right. It. Limited. <laughs> and if you and if you're like me and Roberto, and you drive a convertible, you should probably call Craig and and head for the Cape. Right. Yeah, I, that's what thank I you, wanted. Bye, bye. bye. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you.